this video is not done by a professional mechanic. This is a common man's experience in vehicle maintenance. It's intended to help you and entertain you at the same time. Replacing rear shocks in a 1976 three quarter ton Suburban. Brought to you by TheBourbon.com. Here's the old shocks, as you can see. A little bit of rust up there, pretty worn out. Very bouncy ride. They've been on there since sometime in the mid 90s, maybe early 90s. These are the new shocks, Bilstein 5100 series, meant for this vehicle. Quick thing, they're gonna come in a box where it shows a yellow and blue shock on the outside, but this is actually what's on the inside, so don't worry about that. These are made in the United States, by the way. To get the old shocks off, which is the first thing you're going to need to do, make sure you spray the upper and the lower bolts ahead of time with some WD-40 or anti-seize of your choice. I'm not sponsored by WD-40. Let it sit on there for a while because they've been on there since the early 90s or late 80s like mine. It's going to be pretty tough as you can see here. I struggled and had to use two hands, and I also oh. my head. So I'm going to wear a helmet. So that's how you get the bottom ones off first. So I always take that, like you saw before when I bumped my head, take the bottom one off first, then take the top ones off. There's a little washer up there. And then they should just pull right off. Boom. Now, should leave you with this pin in the frame. This is only on my vehicle. So as you can see on both sides, there's a pin. And this one is a bugger. This would be the driver's side pin. It's on a bracket mounted on top of the frame. And it's, mine was locked on there. And I had to spray it with WD-40. And leave it sit so while I let it sit I took the other pin off on the passenger side this one's right in the frame as you can see that one comes right off so you got to take that upper pin out if you have a upper pin configuration in your shocks back to the upper pin on the driver's side that was stuck I put a breaker bar I fed it up in there the back side of that bracket that mounts on top of the frame And it was really stuck, so I had to use my foot, get a good grip of the frame or somewhere, and then basically squat it loose. And then in order to get the top bolt out that's on the back side of that pin, you have to get yourself in between the rear differential and the gas tank and the exhaust pipe, like I'm doing here, to get that stupid nut off. All right, back to the other side that I already have removed. As you can see, the hole in the frame where the upper pin goes has a little bit of rust on it, so clean that up. If you got the shock off, it's gonna be a lot easier to paint it, or clean it and paint it while the sh uh, shock is off. So as you can see, I just sprayed it a little flat black. It's gonna look nice under there. Now, onto the new shocks. As you can see, it comes with an upper pin already in place, and the bolt that goes on the back side of it, spray it with a little anti-seize first before you put it back in there and then put the upper part of the shock into its position first that bolt goes on the back side of the pin or back side of the frame again your shocks might be different for the bottom bolts I went and bought new bolts for the bottom new bolts new lock washers mine are 9 16 and then you gotta put the bottom mount of the shock into the bracket with your new bottom bolts get tough here you're gonna need to really get your bench press up here's our first or excuse me second problem after getting the pin stuck in the frame not being able to get that upper pin stuck in the frame i could not get the shock into the lower mounting bracket Whoever put the previous shocks on, I don't know if they were too small or they bared down too much on this bracket and it squeezed it in, which made it too narrow for the bottom bushing of the shock. 
Uh, as you can see, I could not get it in there. Uh, you gotta. I tried pounding it a little bit with a hammer, and it didn't work. I couldn't get it to line up. So I had to take some somewhat drastic measures. All right, here's an up close of it. That's the bushing in the bottom of the shock mount. And that is the bottom shock mount, which it was too wide for. It didn't fit on the inside of there. So this is just showing you the other side as well. Neither side fit. So I had to take a grinder and grind it out. I also pounded it wider with a hammer. I also took a cutting wheel and trimmed down just a little bit on the bushing of the shock. Bilstein probably would frown on that, but hey, it helped me. I also learned a trick. Take the old pin and pound it through once you get it into the bottom bracket and that'll force it to line up because it doesn't matter if you mess up the old bottom bolt because you're just going to throw that away. And then as you can see, the new bottom bolt with a tiny little bit of help will just go right in. So once again, use the old bolt and pound it through to line it up and then put your new bolt in then tighten the bottom bolt on both sides as you can see I also cleaned up this bottom bracket you'll see in a minute I cleaned those up and painted them as well now that you got your bottom bolts in you go back up to the top bolts and snug those down if I didn't say that before don't snug the top ones up right away and tighten them to get the bottom bolts in and then tighten the bottom bolts and the top bolts as you can see shocks are completely installed and I cleaned up those bottom brackets painted them a little bit and you should be all set brand new Bilstein 5100s on the rear rides better too no more bouncing <laughs>